I'm Ian Jasper. I'm the captain of Long Beach City College robotics team. We, uh, every year we develop a new underwater vehicle. It's a remotely operated vehicle, or ROV for short. Um, we enter a competition every year. It's an international competition with schools from around the world who do the same thing. We, we build a robot from the ground up in nine months or less. What I've found by developing a robot every year is that it, it gives, in engineering, it gives you the practical experience that you don't get just sitting in a class crunching numbers all day. Really, there's no other classes where you can see something being designed and then seeing it actually in your hands, being able to hold it, holding your design. Every time that I walk into this class, there's something new I'm learning. Um, I, I'd like to say that I start knowing nothing. Um, and so, you know, you get faster at screwing bolts, but then you learn how to solder, and then you learn how to do some programming, and it's, it's a pretty well-rounded class. One of the things that's really important to the team is the, uh, the relationship that we have with our sponsors. And these sponsors provide anywhere from materials to engineering units uh, to brand new units, uh, various things that we can utilize. One of the things that students like to do is get to know the sponsor's product and understand what the sponsors are about and you know, some of them are looking at going to go work going to work for some of our sponsors. What we're working on right now, uh, we're working on the gripper design, we're finalizing that up. The outside of the gripper is going to lock into a basket that we're going to take weights that are simulating lava samples and we're going to put them into the basket and bring them back to the surface. This locking mechanism part on the outside, which we're finalizing, has to be able to securely fast into the basket, take it down, retrieve the lava samples, and then connect back up to the ROV and bring it back to the surface. My favorite thing about the ROV this year is um, the body, I mean the chassis, it's just so, it looks very dynamic, it looks like it, obviously it has applied a lot more vector math to it than the previous body and it's smaller, it's not as bulky. It's insanely maneuverable, just nothing we've ever come close to before, which I absolutely love. I'm Ricardo Hussain, I did a lot of the soldering on the boards, we have three beams circuit boards in there, the main control board, the H-bridge board, and the camera board over here. Um, since I pilot, I use the, um, this system, and this is my control. It's, it's a, like a PS2 controller, so it's very easy to approach and tackle, you know. The majority of people know what it is, you know, they play these games, you know, so you can just go in and just start playing with it like it's a video game. They have been uh, interviewed by a number of people, so the ROV was brought out into the sunlight, sat outside for about an hour in the, in the hot sun. It was probably in the 90 Fahrenheit out there. And so the internal temperature of the ROV control was down a little hot. We'd have problems with that before, and we've always covered it up. In the heat of the competition, that was kind of forgotten about. And so when they first put it in the water, the ROV didn't respond, didn't work, and you know, for me it was, oh no, because everything had gone so smoothly the whole year. Everything had gone right on schedule, every, the practice session, they had hours and hours of practice, everything was fine. It was kind of hard to get into the, the hot temperature when their practice sessions are at midnight. And by then everything pretty much cooled down. So. After eight minutes into their 15 minute run, the ROV cooled down enough and all of a sudden started responding. And uh, Yassine and, the, and uh, the team got in there and was figured out how to do, how to operate the ROV with partial controls. And they finished the entire task with 33, I think it was uh, 
30 seconds left. Being on the team helps me see um, that a lot of teamwork is necessary for projects, just building anything together. I mean, one person is assigned to create one part, another person has to actually fabricate it, be the machinist for it, and it just, it all comes together through teamwork. Um, it's been a learning experience, learning how to lead and run multifaceted project has been really interesting. Um, I feel like my leadership skills have improved a lot and it's, it's more like real life where I'm going to have to learn how to you know, manage something, a whole engineering project of my own and it's been very beneficial to me. Sure was great. Everybody knew their systems inside and out. They went in if they had problems, they were troubleshooting them, they got them fixed. They knew what they had to do as far as timing, get everything done, all the practicing they had prior. They went in and they did the work. It's kind of hard to argue bringing back the silver medal, you know, bringing back second place with the team, you know. You've got a uh, community college group and they're doing this on their own time, largely with their own money. And uh, whatever we don't have as far as uh, sponsor help, they fill in the gaps with their own fundraising. So it's pretty nice to see them put together a team, follow it all the way through, come up with a working robot, and uh, have something 